NCAA tourney win for the Alani since 2013. And really nothing subtle about what they do, Jess. And they are a very good outside shooting team when they need to be. But when they don't need to be, they pound it inside and just feed Kofi and make whoever is trying to guard him miserable. And that's what they did here. Absolutely. And it starts with their defense, Dave. Their, that Orange Crush defense was just overwhelming today for Drexel. They started off three for 18 from the floor. And those shots were all contested. And after that first four or five minutes, they took that defense. They turned it into offense by pushing the basketball. 19 fast break points led to so many of those points in the paint. When Illinois gets out and run, I just love to watch them in the open court. They are scintillating in the open court. Oh, they really are. They are a fun team yeah. to watch. They shot 57% in this game, only attempted seven threes. Mm. And so now they move on for a very intriguing matchup in the second round against Loyola of Chicago. The Ramblers, winners over Georgia Tech by 11. It'll be the first meeting in 10 years between these in-state foes. Alana have won the last three Ramblers 15 zip second chance points uh, against Georgia Tech. For a while, though, for Ohio State, become just the ninth two seed ever to lose to a 15 in 142 games. You know what, though, Jess? You miss nine free throws, you turn it over 16 times. These things happen. Exactly right. A season high 16 turnovers, and then you give up the 11 three point shots, and you give Oral Roberts two best players, A. Smith and O'Banner. 59 combined points. It was just a disaster for Ohio State. They rushed so many shots. Oral Roberts does not have a good defense, but Ohio State settled possession after possession for those mid-range jumpers instead of pounding it inside to EJ Liddell. Uh, a wonderful season for Ohio State, but like Coach said, a very bitter loss in the end of the game. They feel like they should have won. Yeah, no doubt. First time in six NCAA tourney appearances as a head coach that Chris Holtman's team has failed to advance out of the first game and so Ohio State does get knocked out you see the season in review for the Buckeyes made the Big Ten championship game got their highest NCAA tourney seed in eight years really got it going offensively defense struggled at times particularly down the stretch as they went through a, a losing skid what do you make of this team I mean look they were unranked the first AP yeah. poll in January they were not predicted to be at the top of the Big Ten this year so in a lot of ways kind of a surprising year and yet when you're a two seed yeah. and you get knocked out in the first round it's tough to put too positive a spin on it <laughs> yeah this is a team that overachieved for sure this year they overcame a ton of injuries you didn't even know what their lineup was going to be throughout the mid part of the year i remember their big win at iowa chris holtman said to them in the locker room to his own guys he said you guys are surprising me with how we are playing but they got their defense figured out and Dave, just last weekend, they were in the championship game against Illinois, took them to overtime, yeah. and they come out and play probably their worst game of the season when it matters the most. And fair to mention, you were talking about injuries, no Kyle Young in this game. Oh, yeah. I mean, he would have made that an killed. impact, no doubt, for them. But again, a team picked seventh in the preseason, the unofficial poll of the Athletic and the Columbus Dispatch. Far outperformed that, but just couldn't get it done. They should enjoy it. A 23-point win. It's their third largest margin of victory ever in an NCAA tournament game. Their largest ever against a single-digit seed. I mean, they didn't just beat North Carolina. They beat them down, Jess. Oh, no question. Took them to the woodshed. I mean, the 13 threes were huge in this game. But the story coming in was the rebounding. North Carolina just destroys teams on the offensive glass. They averaged 16 per game. In the ACC tournament, they averaged 20 offensive rebounds per game. In the first half of this one, when the game was decided, Wisconsin held them to three offensive rebounds, six different badgers pulled down four or more rebounds. That was really the story, and you tweeted it out earlier, Dave. This is the best game Wisconsin has played by far this entire season. They were awesome. Yeah, they really were, and you know, there was so much talk about pace in this game and who would dictate the pace. Game played in the 80s for the winning team, yeah. right? And it's Wisconsin. I mean, 85 points for them. They were more than happy to run up and down the court with North Carolina. It's tied for their third most points they have ever scored in an NCAA tourney game. So uh, just very uncharacteristic for Purdue, just didn't play well. And this is not how they typically perform in an NCAA tournament, just the third time in their last 20 appearances, they've lost their opening game. And again, this wasn't some sort of a fluke here. I mean, North Texas led this game 
virtually start to finish, yes. Yeah, they came out early and decided to load up on the post defensively, and they were not going to let Zach Eady or Travion Williams beat them. They weren't going to let them score. They were going to make them decision makers. And so they had to kick the ball out. Purdue did not make them pay for that defense. They only went 9 for 30 from beyond the arc. And obviously, Ivy had the huge game with 26 points, but it took him 24 shots to get those 26 points. That was not part of the game plan. So they just couldn't crush that defense for those decisions. But they were the better team. And the Big Ten really struggled in overtime so far in this tournament. Purdue just could not get a bucket when it mattered the most. And that's a that's a pretty bitter loss as well. Yeah, no doubt. Three overtime losses now. It's the first time ever the Big Ten has lost multiple games to teams seeded 13 or worse in an NCAA tournament in one NCAA tournament. North Texas winning a turning game for the first time ever. Mm. And so they move on as we take a look at the brackets. The top half of the South, Wisconsin, will get Baylor next. You see the Bears, of course, the top seed. They beat Hartford by 24. Really good shooting team, but just 11 of 33 from behind the arc in that one. So it'll be Wisconsin and Baylor on Sunday. You think about they should have been there last year, of course, and we all know what happened. And to persevere, to come back this year, have another really good season, and to punctuate it with at least one NCAA yeah. tournament wins, not to say they can't get more. That was an impressive effort, Jess. Yeah, this is truly one of the greatest rebuilds in NCAA history. Yeah. I mean, they were struggling to say the least and what Steve Peichel has done here is just amazing and it was only fitting that his first recruit Geo Baker gets the winning basket they won every 50-50 ball we knew it was going to be the first team to 60 to win this rock fight and when Rutgers rebounds and they play gritty defense, they usually have a chance to win. But you just have to salute everyone involved in that decision to bring Steve Peichel in. Uh, just an amazing turnaround for Rutgers. Yeah, great hire from Pat Hobbs, the AD, yeah. and he has done a tremendous job, was given time to rebuild it. But frankly, didn't take him that long yeah. to get them competitive. And you know, what a story. And again, playing a, a team, a like-minded team in Clemson, two really good defensive teams and just kind of won a battle of wills. And so now they move on. They get a chance to face the two-seed Houston. So Jacob Young tries to knock off his dad's alma mater <laughs> in the 2-10 game. You see Syracuse got a win against San Diego State. So they will take on West Virginia in the second round. In the